Happy, what is today? Oh, today's August 23rd. This is a big day for me, so it'll be interesting to see what happens today. For those of you that follow me, you know what I mean by that. All right, my friends, um, I'm going to do something a little different, and I want to talk about numbers. Because we've all heard Friday the 13th. The 13 number is bad, and if you get that number, it's awful. And I've also heard people say if they get the number 666 on a receipt, they will add something to it. So I wanted to share with you what that is. Um, and it is a message for you, believe it or not. And it is not dark, it is not evil, and nothing's going to jump out of the mirror and eat you. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> and if it does, holy shit. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Okay, guys, honestly, though. So, um, numerology is the study of numbers. Uh, they have a vibration. Everything vibrates at a, at a certain frequency, at a different frequency. So what I did is I pulled up something on the Internet because I wanted to talk about Pythagoras, and he is the father of modern numerology. So he's a Greek mathematician who lived from 569 to 470 B.C., and it is said by many to be the organized, or oh, sorry, the originator of much of what we call numerology today. The actual origins of numerology predate Pythagoras, the most popular being the very old Hebrew Kabbalah. In the 20th century, the old discipline seems to magically reappear in the form of a series of books published 1911 to 1917 by L. Dow Balliet. And it was helped along by in the 30s by Florence Campbell, and within the next few decades, a wealth of literature was available to the public. Indeed, if you look at the past 90 years, it would seem that the, that the discipline has moved very rapidly, but perhaps all of this was known at a much earlier time, and it was just hiding from us for a while, or being hidden. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so Pythagoras, father of numerology. Numerology, um, if any of you have ever Googled it, and you might, because it's amazing how accurate it can be. You know, sometimes people will say, I wish I had a record of my, I wish I had a, not a record, a map or a <sighs> directions. I need some directions. Well, you do. It's called numerology. It, I, um, I dabble in it quite a bit. And it is amazing the accuracy it has or the things that it gives you that you're just like, oh, my God. So I, I would highly recommend if you are interested in it to have somebody do your number chart. I, like I said, I dabble in it, but I would definitely go to somebody who has a lot of experience in this. Um, I have a program where you can plug in uh, your information and get all your stuff. You, the, the program is free, but if you want the enhanced version, I think it's like 40 bucks for the year. Um, I did get the enhanced version. If you're interested in that, let me know, and I'd be happy to share a link with you. All right, I wanted to share those numbers. Number 13. All right. Number 13, if you're seeing it, is the number of tra traditions, hard work, organization and right judgment. The number 13 is also a feminine number and suggests that you tap into your intuition. Angel number 13 is a message from your angels that some upheavals may take place in your life. This is a this is happening for karmic reasons and will break new ground for you that will bring new, about new opportunities for you to grow spiritually. The angels ask that you adapt and change gracefully. Karma does it come from what you did yesterday? Karma comes from what you did in your last lifetime. So, and there are numbers assigned to that too. Um, different karmic lessons. Uh, I have karmic debt that I'm working through. Because I was naughty. <sighs> okay. Angel number 13 is a message from your angels that you are being guided and assisted with your soul mission. Trust the angels and ascended masters that they're by your side and they go through the transitions that will bring into perfect alignment with your divine life purpose. All right. Ascended masters, um, Jesus is an ascended master. He's walked the earth um, and he no longer needs to. So uh, Buddha is an ascended master. So um, Mary is an ascended master. Um, 
And if you're not familiar with those, I suggest you check those out too because that's an amazing wealth of, I mean, it's just, it'll open your mind, definitely. All right, uh, 666. Da, da, da. It is not evil. It is not dark. Um, and it is not the sign of the beast. It's not. So this number tells us that it's time to focus on our personal spirituality in order to balance and heal any issues in your life. Hmm. Spirituality. It's like opposite of the beast. If you see and if you see this number on your receipts, it's not a, it's not an omen at all. It is an indication that your thoughts are out of balance and you are focused too much on the material aspects of your life. So if you're seeing this on license plates that are driving by you or you see a sign or you're dreaming about it, things can come to you in your dreams as well. Yeah, it's not the beast and you're not, it's not coming to get you. Uh, energies of abundance and prosperity are being deflected and resisted as worry and anxiety cause a barrier to balance spirit harmony and receptivity on your behalf. Angel number 666 takes you to balance your thoughts between the spiritual or takes you, it asks you to balance your thoughts between the spiritual and the material aspects and to maintain faith and trust that your needs will be met. That's pretty awesome guys. That's not scary at all. I also eventually want to do some uh, videos on symbology because all those signs that we think are evil actually were, were literally brought to us first from peace and love and it's those uh, people who were uh, troubled to say the least turned it into something awful. The swastika was a sign of peace. Uh, uh, the pentagram that was altered and, and uh, distorted for for dark. Um, but none of those things, neither and none, neither of those things were evil. Isis is uh, wasn't uh, an evil thing either. It's something that people have taken and, and twisted it. I know the first time I heard somebody talk about um, Isis, I, I kind of freaked out a little tiny bit and I was like, what the? Why would you even talk about that? What did I just do? Did I flip me? <laughs> I think I flipped me, but I don't know how I did that. Um, I don't know. My screen is doing weird things. I'm just going to look for something for you guys real quick while I have you on here. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we can't find her. Isis is a goddess from the polytheistic pantheon of Egypt. A goddess. Not evil, not dark, but a goddess. All right, you guys. So a uh, little bit, of, little, little tidbit of information for you today. Hopefully um, you found that interesting. And if you didn't, dang it. Have a great day. And uh, hopefully I will bring some more information to you eventually. Bye.